ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him for everything he has given us We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, all his companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless every single one of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, we have been making mention of the fact in the last two days that life is a test. We have been brought into this world in order to be tested. So things will definitely happen in our lives that we don't like and we don't want as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haven't we been saying that? Yesterday we heard so many speakers and mashallah they said that. So today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to test us in a very big way. What was it? Let me tell you what it was. When we go for Hajj, the thing that we've been spoiled with our entire lives may be missing when we go for Hajj. You used to the best bathroom ever. You go for Hajj, they promise you a five star bath and then you go to Makkah and you see the small little cubicle and they say that's five star. That's your test. What are you going to do about it? Your luxury that you've been used to for so long has just been taken away from you for the five days of Hajj. That's your test. You're used to beautiful food. You know, in Malaysia, mashallah, everything is makan, makan. I'm sure you know that, isn't it? Mashallah. I used to call it makanistan at one stage. So, subhanallah, when you go for Hajj, you don't find sometimes the food that you want or something goes wrong with the food and you paid for a five-star package. So if you are a person who comes out and says, I paid for this package and who the hell do you guys think you are and use derogatory terms to refer to them, you're just failing your test. You can raise the issue respectfully, you can. But respectfully, look brother, what went wrong? Is there some way I can help? So similarly, we spoke about so many things yesterday and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that today the air conditioning unit won't be working early morning. It's going to come on a little bit later on. What did you do? Well, you know, I don't need to say. If you reacted by saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, or you went to ask someone to say, look, what's, is there something wrong? Are you sure the temperature is, you know, put down? You sure you know how to operate the system and so on? Alhamdulillah, you have passed the test, maybe. And you thank Allah to say, Ya Allah, you know what? Like someone told me that, Qul naru harra. They said, I dealt with it by remembering the verse where Allah says, The fire of Jahannam is much more hot. Allahu Akbar. Wow. So the reason I make mention of this is because when something goes wrong and is not the way you want it, look at it as an opportunity to earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at it as a chance to showcase your character and conduct to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, look, this went absolutely AWOL, but here I am and I'm still composed and I'm smiling and I'm happy and I'm excited. That's the way we will earn Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. I chose to start this way because uh, it's been quite warm in here. Right now it's a little bit cooler, but alhamdulillah not as cool as yesterday. And I notice all the fans that, you know, the fans that are being, uh, the makeshift fans, that are being used in order to fan ourselves down. Alhamdulillah, good one. Yes, mashallah. And it reminds me of the story of the stingy man who did not buy anything for his daughter's wedding until he saw uh, some boxes of fans being sold at the side of the road. And he asks the man, how much are these? And the man says, okay, I'm going to use Malaysian currency just because we're in Malaysia, right? The man says, uh, one ringgit for two. And he was so excited. Wow, this is so cheap. He says, how come it's so cheap? He says, okay, this is one ringgit for two. This one here is one ringgit for one. This one here is five ringgits for one. And the other one is 10 ringgits for one. He said, no, 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 no. I'll have the lowest one. So he bought three, four boxes for the guests at his wedding, at his daughter's wedding. And he took them home and his wife had a big smile thinking my husband's finally responsible. He's finally doing something about our daughter's marriage. And so what happened is, as he went back to work, his wife starts opening one of them. One, she tested it. You know, you open those fans, mashallah, they, they, they so beautiful. And as she tried to use the first one, it broke. So she opens another one. As she tried to use the second one, it broke. The third one broke. So she calls her husband, hey, come back. He came back. What's wrong? These are rejects. You better go and replace them. So he takes the boxes and he went back and he told the guy on the side of the road, hey, these do not work. He said, what do you mean they don't work? 
He said, yes, they don't work because look, they're breaking. First one, he showed him with one more and he said, look, it's broken. He said, hey, how much did you pay for these? He says, I paid the lowest price. He said, well, did you read the instructions? He says, no. He says, let me show you how to use these. If you pay the 10 ringgit, you can actually open it and use it. You pay 5 ringgit, you can open it. You want to pay 1 ringgit for 2, you've got to know how to use this thing. Let me show you. So he opens it. He opens it up wide. He says, right now, hold it. He held it in front of his face. Now you've got to move your head. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. My brothers and sisters, we, mashallah, we have paper. Paper doesn't break. So you can keep on using your little cardboard and the straight path booklets that you have with you. Mashallah, they work. They work two in one. When you got the booklet, they didn't tell you you're going to need it as a fan as well. Mashallah. So you better, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting to our topic, my brothers and sisters, in the last two days, what have we heard? We heard how we will earn Jannah, how we will protect ourselves from Jahannam. We were encouraged in so many different ways. We heard so many different speakers from across the globe reminding us what to do and reminding us that heaven is the goal and reminding us not to lose focus speaking about the straight path this is the straight path this is what it is this is how you will earn the pleasure of allah this is how you will protect yourself from the devil so we've heard so many lectures but the question is are we really going to change a person who says i will change inshallah tomorrow will not change but a person who says, when I leave this hall, I'm not going to take down my hijab. That's it, subhanallah. Then you are talking business. When I leave this hall, no salah is ever going to be missed after this. When I leave this hall, I'm, going to, I'm making sure I will enroll myself for this course and that, lex that lesson and this course. And perhaps these lectures that are taking place and i will learn from this book i will attend the the explanation of this tafsir in my masjid and i will do this and that and i'm making sure so the resolutions come here and now they don't come once you exit can i tell you why the ambience of this hall is totally different the spirituality in this hall is beautiful do you know the hadith says whenever people have gathered together to remember allah and remind each other of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mercy of Allah descends upon them. The angels surround them. They make dua for them. Mercy descends upon them. And so much of goodness is coming from there that Allah makes mention of them in the heavens. Subhanallah. Allah is speaking about you and I right now with our names to the malaika, to the angels. So there's a different spirituality. If you want to make resolutions, you make them now. Subhanallah. Oh Allah, I will never miss a salah from now. From now from this particular moment. I will never be lazy to fulfill my wudu. I will not be lazy to read a portion of the Quran every single day. If you die one day and you've been used to reading a portion of the Quran every single day, you will have died on a day when you would have read a beautiful portion of the Quran. So you know your deeds are written and recorded and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write it for you. Obviously that the day this person died, they had said Astaghfirullah so many times, like I said yesterday. They had, for example, read the Quran, a portion of it. They tried to understand it. They shed a tear, a tear of what? A tear of regret over sins and a tear of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will come handy. Definitely. It will help you. It will definitely help you earn Jannah and be protected from hellfire. Those eyes that have cried for the sake of Allah will be protected from being burnt in hellfire by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today people cry, cry over what? I don't even want to say 14th of February. So many tears, astaghfirullah. So many tears. Why? I didn't get flowers. I didn't get flowers, astaghfirullah. And you know, the other type of tears that come on that day, where you do get flowers and you ask your husband, where did you get them from? Come on. Where did you get them from? So there's a, there's a problem. And this is why Islam says love is actually spread throughout the year. It's not just one day. Because there is a problem. Wallahi, I've known of marriages that have broken. I know, I've known of marriages that have broken. Not because there were no flowers that came on the, on, on the 14th of February, but because of the doubt and suspicion in the heart of the spouse as to where the spouse brought the flowers to be given to me. Where did they come from? Who gave you? I want to know now. I bought them from a shop. I need the receipt. Subhanallah. 
And then no ways. I know you've got something going and I know you just, these are hand downs, you know, mashallah with us and with me too up to this time, you know, we have these thiyab and these clothes, mashallah, hand downs, you know, either we get them from somewhere or they are given from us to someone else, you know, lower down in the family. Subhanallah, my son, I can no longer, one of my sons is taller than me. I can no longer give him my thobes, but I used to at a time, mashallah. And now what I've done is, you know, the bottom, the hem, we've kept it quite big so we can, you know, open it out, say, yeah. Back to the old days, mashallah. It's nice, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. But the point being raised, forget about the 14th of Feb. It has absolutely no value in the Islamic calendar. What I need to know, the love that I have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what I need to declare today. Put up your hands if you love Allah. Mashallah, put your hands down. Not a single one without the hands up, subhanallah. But now put up your hands. If you have not missed a single salah in the last 10 years, put your hands up. Allahu Akbar. Now put your hands up if you're going to make sure you're not going to miss a, a salah again. Put your hands up. Okay. Okay. I, we need to take a photograph of these hands. Subhanallah. <laughs> I tell you why. Subhanallah. Obviously not a photograph as in a digital photograph, but we need to bear in mind that we put our hands up. The angels are bearing witness that we made a promise to say, I'm not going to miss a salah from today. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I want to share a story that brings tears to my eyes. The prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. He was the prophet who called his people for years on end, years on end. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Nuh alayhi salam, Allah says, we sent him to his people. He lived with them for a thousand years, less 50, 950 years. He lived for much longer, but with his people, calling them to Allah, 950 solid years. He reminded them, come to Allah. Imagine a Nabi of Allah. A messenger of Allah, 950 years. Do you know how many people accepted his message? The maximum number ever mentioned is 80. And the minimum is 11. So somewhere between 11 and 80 people. In how many years? In nine and a half centuries. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him thereafter, and this is the point I want to raise, that every time you call them, and everyone who has had a reminder, we wrote it down. We know about it. Your ears have heard so many reminders about salah, about dressing, about abandoning zina and adultery, about abandoning sin, about abandoning pornography and whatever other sins there are, about abandoning all of them and engaging in that which will please Allah, reading the Quran, going out to learn lessons, enrolling in some school and trying to learn more about Allah. You've heard it a million and one times, so many times. Every single time you heard it, you need to know, ma asabaka lam That which got to you was never meant to miss you. Allah knows. He planned for it to get to you. And this is why the angels of death, or should I say the angels, the gatekeepers of hell will ask all those who will be doomed to hell as they are entering hell. What's the question? Towards the end of Surah Zumar, Allah makes mention of how the people of hellfire will be entering hellfire in groups. And as they're entering, the angels will ask them a question. Didn't Allah send you reminders and messengers telling you, warning you about this day, warning you about hellfire, reminding you that this is what the outcome of those who have been disobedient will, uh, disobedient will be. And the people will say, yeah, they did. But now it's too late. Which means Allah knows reminders have come to you and to me. Messengers and messages from the messengers and messengers of the messenger have come and they've spoken to us and they've told us we've had reminders in the form of books, in the form of the Quran and the Sunnah, in the form of lectures, in the form of CDs, in the form of radio programs, in the form of television programs, in the form of the internet, in the form of whatever other messages you might have got on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. 
We're talking of the correct usage of these items, not the wrong usage. You know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so many other things, they are just like a knife. You can either use it for something good, or you can use it to commit murder, to do something bad. It's up to you how you use it, subhanallah. But remember, every time you see a message, you will be questioned about it. You will be asked about it. Wallahi, there will come a day when you will be told, look, we sent you three and a half million messages. We don't want to be stuck to say, oh, I didn't take it seriously. Tick off your list. How many messages have you had? Start ticking today. How many messages do you have? You will tick off before you know it by the end of the year. If you are really conscious of it, you will have ticked off at least 20,000 reminders from Allah. Minimum. I promise you. Different types of reminders have come to you. But the thing is, look at Nuh alayhi salam. When he complains to Allah, Oh Allah, look at my people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions what Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam says. رَبِّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُ قَوْمِي لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَارًا Surah Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, he calls out to his people, he called, he's telling Allah, Oh Allah, I called out to my people day and night, or night and day, and I called them openly, I called them in secret, but they are just going further and further away. How many of us hear a good Islamic message Calling us towards Allah, going towards our own maker, and we are going further away. May Allah safeguard myself and yourselves. So Allah tells Nuh alayhi salam when he complains, Allah says, you know what? <laughs> oh Noah, now, and this was 950 years later, now don't bother with them anymore. Don't bother with them anymore. None of those who have disbelieved will believe. The ones who have believed, that's it. The figure is closed. It's sealed. Now start preparing your ark and the punishment is going to come to all of those who remain. So that is why when the ark was being built, no one was accepting Islam. They started laughing at him and they kept on saying, Ya Nuh, sirta najaran ba'da an kunta nabiyya. Oh Noah, you've now become a carpenter, but up to now you were a prophet of Allah. They were laughing and scoffing. So Allah says, don't worry. Don't even turn towards their scoffing. Not at all. Because their quota of reminders is finished. That's my point. How do you know or how do I know if my quota of reminders is over? How do I know? Yes, we probably would expect more and more reminders up to the point of death. But what guarantee do you have or do I have? If Allah says every one of you has a quota of reminders, then you can tick it off and there's one less going to come. Who do you want to remind you? Well, they will remind you. You have had thousands of people come to remind you in your life. People you've looked up to, people you've dreamt to meet. One day I'm going to see this person. They came to you, they told you, turn to Allah, give up your bad dress code, your laziness for salah, your eating of haram, your, the, the, the ill treatment of your, your family members, the swear words that come out of your mouth, the way you treat your spouse, give it all up, the sins, the adultery, the gambling, the drinking, everything. You've heard the person of your choice, whom you look up to say exactly that. But the problem is, Allah is going to record this and if we don't take heed we stand to lose because Allah will say look the most powerful message you wanted came to you what did you do about it did you move did your heart soften up a little bit to say oh Allah I owe my entire existence to you who made me Allah made me he made you what have we done in the last two days the only thing we've done is we've kept on reminding ourselves that we owe our life and our death to Allah. Every sacrifice of ours is owned, owed to Allah. Our salah is owed to Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحِيَّايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ We've heard that so many times. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Salati, my prayer. Nusuki, my, my sacrifice, my, whatever I've done for the sake of Allah. I don't like to use the term ritual. Subhanallah. My life and my death, all of that is for Allah, Lord of the worlds. It belongs to Allah. It's owed to Him. My brothers and sisters, it's about time we quit our bad ways. Life is not all about the, the glamour and the glitter that we see around us. No, it has a very serious purpose. 
We are becoming older as the days pass. We're not becoming any younger. Subhanallah. And this is why they ask you, how old are you? They don't say, how young are you? Have you ever thought of that? They say, how old are you? You say, you mean I'm old? No, 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 don't worry. We don't mean you're old, but we do mean there is a reality that is undeniable and that his age goes upwards. Subhanallah. It's a gift of Allah. You're becoming slightly older. You get gray hairs. Gray hairs are a reminder from Allah to say, hey, you're becoming old. A pain that you might suffer on your knee or your toes or a little issue you have in your breathing or your eyesight and so on. All a reminder from Allah to say, hang on, your time is coming to an end. That's all. So just develop your link with me and you will be set forever. Where do we go from now? Where do we head from now? We know the straight path. We've heard about heaven. We've heard about hellfire. We've heard about everything. We know the goodness. So what should I do? I need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Hadid, verse number 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Has the time not come for the believers to humble themselves, to humble their hearts in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has the time not come? When is it going to come? When do you want to change? When is it? If you don't change today, when will you change? Like I said moments ago, the environment we have here, the spirituality, the goodness, thousands of people whose hearts are softened. Do you agree? Can I ask you another question? A very important one. And I want to see a show of hands. How many of us truly feel that within the last two days, our hearts have softened up quite a lot? Put up your hands. Alhamdulillah. Look at that. So do something about it. Whilst your heart is soft, promise Allah to say, Oh Allah, right now, this is the resolution I am making. And this is what it is. And I'm changing here and now. Do you know that if you leave a motivational talk for more than 48 hours, you've watered down the impact of it in terms of resolution that you may have made to a complete nil. 90% chance that you're not going to. If, if I can wait for 48 hours, in those 48 hours, the heart is softened. After that, what happens? I go back to my old routine and the heart becomes hard once again. Subhanallah. Be careful, my brothers, the way you use your mouths with your wives. Be careful. I see they're just looking at me, which means they use their mouths as well. So my sisters, you too, subhanallah. Be careful the way you use your mouths with your spouses. Yesterday we spoke about the hijab of a woman and I get an email from someone saying, please remind the men that they too need to wear hijab. So my brothers, there are black cloaks out there, all of you inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. No, the reality is there is hijab for men. What is the hijab? It is to lower your gaze, to dress with clothing that is not tight. Wallahi, it's your duty. You cannot show all your, you know, limbs and organs thinking, hey, I'm a man. No, 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 it's for you as well. Make sure you are dressed with loose clothing and make sure that the material is good and so on. It's for you as well, my brothers. It's not just for the women. In fact, when Allah speaks of lowering the gaze and hijab, He speaks about the men first in Surah Nur. Tell the believing males first to lower their gazes and to protect their private parts. And one whole verse later, he says, And also tell the believing women. Subhanallah. Amazing. But the men always think hijab for the women. Hijab. For the brother, hijab is for you as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. You need to lower your gaze. You won't even know who's got the hijab and who hasn't because you're always looking down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us control our eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us really. May Allah forgive us. May He strengthen us. This type of talk that we've had the last two days and anything similar to it motivates us. It wakes us up. It makes us want to do something. It makes us alert. It makes us aware of our link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So keep on attending various talks and lectures and spending time and effort so that you can maintain that motivation on a high. Because if you think I'm going to wait for the straight path next year, between this straight path and that straight path, there are many other paths that are not really straight. 
Ya Allah, forgive us. So this is why we say, make a change now. Go back to Allah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's goodness. The mercy that's descending now will not be descending once we walk out of this hall. Do you know that? That's why when you walk out to the corridor, the feeling is never ever the same as it is while you are sitting here and now. Subhanallah. Allah says, when is it that the believers, has the time not come for your hearts to soften? Come on, you got to say, yes, Ya Allah, my heart, the time has come. My hearts are softened and Alhamdulillah, I turn to you, Ya Allah. Allah says, وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِن قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ let them not be similar to those who have been given the book before them, who prolonged in their bad ways so much that their hearts were hardened. You know, if you prolong in your bad ways for a long, long time, your heart becomes so hard that for you, the sin is nothing. I give you an example. A man who commits adultery or a woman who commits adultery or fornication for the first time would regret it because of their Iman. And then sometimes they commit it again. The regret is there perhaps and a third time the regret begins to dwindle slightly and a fourth time until it becomes 20, 30 times and then it's just a game. It's no longer a regret and Allah is totally out of the picture. Why? Because I'm used to it. My heart is hardened. This is called a hardened heart. You're so used to committing sin that for you to, to, to commit the sin is nothing. When you have been reading your five salah a day to miss one salah, Yes, your heart will be sore and you will read your qada. Then suddenly you miss another one and then you miss a third one and then you miss all your fajr every day. So you say, I'm a very good Muslim. I read salah four times a day. Hey, is this a new sect or something? You need to make an effort to get up. Wallahi, forsake your bed for the sake of Allah. I promise you on the day of, on the day you die, your salah will come in the form of a man carrying you and helping you into your grave and go with you in your grave. And that salah will protect you from the punishment of the grave and the scorpions and the snakes that might attack on that day when you're all alone and your family's left you in the darkness. And they've gone back and they've forgotten about you. And a few generations down, they won't even know your name. But who's with you? My Salah. I used to get up for Salatul Fajr every single day. May Allah strengthen up for Salatul Fajr. How many of us are resolute that from this morning, we will be making Salatul Fajr? Put up your hand. Subhanallah, we see the hands by the will of Allah. The reason I'm telling you to put up your hand, it's not just because I want to see it. It's because you must feel you've made a commitment. That's all. I don't even know the people around me. I can't even see the hands. Oh brother, by the way, I know you, yeah. <laughs> MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. It's a commitment. You've just made a commitment. You've said, Oh Allah, I will not miss. Oh Allah, I will dress appropriately. I will watch my tongue, brothers and sisters. Because today the media is such, every small thing is a big swear word. Do you know that? They start swearing and it's on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Don't let your heart become hard. Go and read verse number 16 of Surah Al-Hadid and you will find it quite clearly telling you, don't let the period prolong, lest your heart becomes hard like those before you. Don't let it become hard. You've done something wrong, turn to Allah immediately, promise Allah never again. I won't do this again. Never. It's not worth it. Wallahi, we are insan. We are human. We do falter. We do fall. But at the same time, turn back to Allah. He is merciful. He will forgive you. But don't plan to commit a sin again. It's like always we say, the four conditions of asking Allah's forgiveness, to admit your sin, to regret it, to promise, Allah, to promise you're not going to do it again. In fact, to admit, to regret, to ask for forgiveness and to promise never to do it again. Four things. Did you hear those four? Can I say them again? Admit your sin. Regret it. Ask Allah to forgive you for the sin and at the same time promise not to do it again. If those conditions are met, any sin between you and Allah is wiped out. Wiped out without ever being mentioned again. When you repent again from the same sin, that second repentance is now repenting for a sin that's no longer existing. So what it does is it elevates your status in the eyes of Allah. To say this person is still concerned about something I've already forgiven them a long time ago that shows that they love me. It shows that they worship me and me alone. So that is an elevation of your status, subhanallah. But if a person commits the same sin again and again, like I've always said, you need to ask Allah's forgiveness again and again. And on condition that when you are asking Allah's forgiveness, you haven't planned to sin, to repeat the sin. 
When I'm asking Allah's forgiveness, I must say never again. I can't say, Oh Allah, I committed this sin. I admit it. Ya Allah, I regret it. I ask you to forgive me. I won't commit it. I won't ever do it again. And then you stop for a moment and say, I might just do it again. Astaghfirullah. That's not what we want. You will not do it again. Then sometime later, if shaitan gets hold of you and the same sin is repeated, go back and repeat the same four stages. Go back. You never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And this is why we say when you're in good company, when you have when you have some positive speech coming in your direction, which motivates you and reminds you by the will of Allah, you will be able to become a much better person. This is why Allah says in Surah Al Imran, verse number 133. <laughs> Make haste, rush towards the forgiveness of Allah. Don't delay. That's what it means. If you delay, you have no guarantee that you will die in the condition of Islam. No guarantee. This is why in another verse Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah as He is supposed to be conscious, as you are supposed to be conscious of Him, and do not die except in the condition of submission. Which means lead your entire life in a way that if you were to die right here, right now, you would not be embarrassed. It would be something good. If any one of us were to die here, right here, right now, subhanallah, and our hearts are softened, and we've just shed tears for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, my ways and my bad habits, and all the struggling and the suffering I've gone through. Ya Allah, I will bear sabr for your sake. Grant me Jannah. And then suddenly you just die. What will happen? You think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to doom you to say, Nah, nah, you know what, not you. Because it wasn't supposed to be there. No, astaghfirullah, no way. It's the mercy of Allah. He knows, and He knows when you're going to go. Part of His mercy is that He did not tell us when we are going to die. He kept that knowledge with Him. Imagine if we knew our date of death, we would commit sin. Say, for example, a person who's going to live for exactly 70, 69 years and 350 days, 55 days, commit sin complete. And when four days are left, Allahu Akbar, Allah forgive me, we would be hypocrites. But part of the mercy of Allah to keep us on track is that He did not tell us when you're going to go. No one knows even on what earth or what land they will die. They have no guarantee of it. It's up to Allah. So if you take a look at the verse I just read before you about of Surah Al Imran, where Allah says, make haste towards the forgiveness of Allah. And that would be making haste towards paradise. It is Maghfirah and Jannah come together. Look at what Allah says. Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Make haste to, towards the forgiveness of your Rabb and the paradise. The two of them come hand in hand. Subhanallah. One does not come with the other. If you are not forgiven, how are you going to go to paradise? Subhanallah. So make haste towards both because you don't know. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He owns it. Keep on asking Allah's forgiveness. Rush. Do not delay. Don't keep it for tomorrow. So many of us have one major sickness. And sometimes I'm affected by it as well. The time of salah has set in. And we're busy doing something quite important. And we think, no, you know what? I'm reading just now. And before you know it, there's a few minutes left and you're running and you're rushing. Ah, I quickly need to do wudu and Allahu Akbar. Oh, I just made it. Doesn't it happen to a lot of us? I heard the yes quite loudly. Mashallah. That is shaitan. Shaitan's making you delay. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, if you want to hear what is your duty, a salatu ala waqtiha, which means salah upon its beginning time. As soon as salah time comes in, you have to stop everything, fulfill your salah. If you are used to saying, oh, it's only the beginning time, there's still an ending time. The minute you're considering ending time, you have a major, major disaster where shaitan is beginning to get hold of you. That's how shaitan starts. So don't allow that to happen to you. Remember, fulfill your salah on its time. You want to do something, do it immediately. You want to read Quran first thing in the morning, after Salatul Fajr, five minutes of your time. How much is five minutes? You know, nowadays, I don't know what platform you might be using here, but I do know that there is something called WhatsApp. I'm sure you know what it is, isn't it? 
People can sit on WhatsApp for five hours without even noticing that they sa they've sat on it. I promise you. They can sit on the internet and on their phones for about 10 hours without even noticing that they've sat on the phone. And if they could eat, they would eat through the phone as well. Really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We waste time. We waste time. I was looking at my contact list last night. And I've got approximately three and a half thousand contacts on my phone. And I was thinking to myself, I had about 753 WhatsApp messages in the evening. And I'm thinking if I have to answer all these messages, I will be here for one week. And by that time, I will already be having more. So all I have to do is select a few, try and see. Oh, by the way, first scroll down and see if wifey has messaged. Mashallah. Yeah, you better do that because otherwise there's a problem. There'll be warfare, you know. So you first scroll down and see if you know a few people, you know, some VIPs in your life, they need to be answered to immediately and you answer them. And then if there's numbers that you don't really know, or sometimes people who are just asking you, you know what really irritates me? And I'm going to say this aloud. Okay. When someone says, Assalamu Alaikum. Okay. I said, Wa Alaikum as -salam. There's no verse of the Quran and no hadith which says I need to type it out. Do you know that? You type, you send me a salam alaikum. I said, wa alaikum salam. But so I said it. I, who said I need to type it out? I really. So now the person says, if I do type it out, wa alaikum salam. They say, now I am busy doing so many things. And here I have a salam alaikum. And I think, oh, mashallah, you know, beautiful brother, uh, you know, a genuine sister, for example, wa alaikum salam. Maybe they want something important. How are you? I'm fine. How's your children? Oh, they're okay. How's everyone? That's okay. How's the weather? Come on, get to the point, please. What do you want? It's not like I'm being funny, but come on, these are important. If there was something wrong, I would put it on Facebook to say, guys, I'm feeling sick, make dua for me. Subhanallah. The whole world would know, oh, sick. Subhanallah. Remember the last time I had a motor vehicle accident and the whole world knew about it? Do you remember? And shukran for your duas, by the way. You can see I'm fit. Mashallah. I'm here in front of you, isn't it? Alhamdulillah. Shukran, shukran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us genuinely feel for one another. Don't wait for someone to advertise that they are unwell. Just make a dua for the entire ummah. And if there are specific names, say them. Don't worry, draw a list of names, you know, and keep on saying, Oh Allah, help, bless this person, bless that person, oh Allah, help them in whatever they're going through. May Allah help every single one of you in whatever you need His help in. And that's your entire life. I mean, may Allah alleviate whatever suffering every one of you, and myself included, is going through. I tell you, we are all going through major issues, major issues, but of a different nature. Some are health matters, some are financial matters, some are social matters, some are marital matters, some are whatever other matters they are. Make sure that it's not the link between you and Allah that is being tested. Make sure that that is solid. So the point I was raising is we can sit on WhatsApp and we are doing nothing. All we're doing is, oh, okay, did you smell the rose outside? How did it smell? And come on, man. And we've got nothing to do. We take pictures of our food and we take pictures of everything and we start sending it to this person and that person. And when I went to the mall, I posed this way and I showed them a picture and I posed the other way and I showed them a picture. And I tried this piece of clothing and I did this to my shoe to show them what type of a shoe I bought. Come on, you rather say Astaghfirullah 10 times, it will land you inshallah straight into Jannah. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us goodness. Let's remember this waste of time is one of shaitan's biggest traps. Shaitan's one of his biggest traps is to make you waste time. And if you look at your own profile on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or WhatsApp, what, the way you use this technology, you will know whether you are already enslaved in that regard. What is this? It is the waste of time. What are you doing on it? Nothing. I'm just sitting. I'm socializing. It's not haram to socialize. Set yourself the time of the day. Half an hour a day, I will use my phone. Woo. La ilaha illallah. 30 minutes a day, I'll use my phone. In fact, if I were to ask you to put up your hands, my hand would be the first one down. Mashallah. But the, the point I'm making is cut down, cut down on it. Come on. Wallahi, it will help you. And don't say I'm bored. What should I do? No, occupy yourself with something important. For the, for the sake of Allah, it might be your last day on earth. And if you have the attitude that today might be the last day of, you know, of mine on earth, one day it will definitely be your last day. It has to. So this is Allah and this is why we say subhanallah if you do not know how to use technology properly cut it out totally If you do know alhamdulillah use it and benefit but if it's coming between you if it's coming you know breaking your marriage for example cut it out throw it away let people dial you who really need you on the landline 
If not, let them call you on your husband's phone or your wife's phone. Mashallah. The only difference is when the wife's phone rings, she'll have an interview before your interview. Mashallah. Subhanallah, I recall a story where there was one sister who answered her husband's phone and she interviewed this person who had called for half an hour. And then she says, okay, hold on for my husband. Then she said, hold on. And then she's interviewing the husband. Do you know this person? Do you know this? Do you know? Now there's another half an hour. An hour later, the phone was already put down and everything was sorted out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, really. Imagine if we are fearing our spouses so much, what type of interviews will we have on the day of judgment, man? When we will not be able to lie, we won't be able to get away from anything. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He have mercy on us. Now I want to share with you the verse of the Quran, the set of verses in Surah Zumar, verse number 53 of Surah Zumar, which is known as the verse of mercy. The verse of mercy, Arja Ayah fil Quran al Kareem. It's the one that has the greatest hope. The verse of the greatest hope. In the Quran, what is it? I read it yesterday. I'm repeating it today. Qul ya ibadiya al-ladina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhunub jami'a innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim Say, O my worshippers, who have transgressed against themselves, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Indeed, He will forgive all your sins, for He is most forgiving, most merciful. Wow. Allah is telling you, don't ever, don't ever lose hope in my mercy. No matter what, do not ever lose hope in my mercy. I will forgive all of your sins, no matter what they are. I am most forgiving, most merciful. So now, mashallah, we are happy. We are smiling. Oh, Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, forgive all our sins. And at the same time, we think to ourselves, Ooh, that is so merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. He says, listen, shaitan's going to come to you and make you delay. That's what we said moments ago. Shaitan will come to you and make you delay. So do you know what Allah says? Immediately after that, He says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِن قَبْلِ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنصَرُونَ Turn back to your Rabb quickly. Turn back to your Rabb quickly. Surrender to him fast before punishment comes to you and then you will not be helped at all. So Allah is reminding you, I am very merciful. I will forgive all your sins. But guess what? Seek forgiveness quickly. Turn now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Today. Subhanallah. I recall I attended the talk in one city. And in the evening, I got a message to say one of the uncles who was sitting with us passed away. And what was I speaking about? I, I still remember clearly I was speaking about forgiveness and the mercy of Allah. And here was a man on a wheelchair sitting on the side and busy crying. That evening he passed away. And I'm thinking to myself, Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on me, have mercy on him. And today I'm saying may he have mercy on us all. Allah is telling you, I'm very merciful. And at the same time, He says, turn quickly to me. Turn back fast. Don't delay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ بَغْتَةً وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ Follow the best of revelation. Follow the best of what has been sent to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before the punishment comes to you suddenly without you realizing. Imagine there is an earthquake right here, right now. And suddenly the whole roof drops and we're all dead. Is it possible? The answer is yes, it is. Imagine the next flight you catch, the pilot is depressed and they refuse to call him a terrorist. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such depression and from becoming victims of them. Just imagine, it's in the hands of Allah. What if as you're going home, huge major car accident? It can happen, it has happened, and it will happen, and it will continue happening, and we may just be the victims. 
So that's why Allah says, Hey, look, I'm Allah is your maker and mine. And He tells you clearly, turn to me before you are overtaken by the punishment suddenly without you realizing. And then you're gone. You're gone. People are doing some absurd things on earth today in the name of religion, in the name of whatever else, in the name of politics and so on. And sometimes they say the politicians do it, but they do, they use religious people to forward their cause. Allah knows what we know is it, barbarism is being spread and people are becoming more and more intolerant of one another. And we could just be the victims, but let's have turned. You and I have to go. How we go is in the hands of Allah. When we go is in the hands of Allah. So remember, Allah is telling you, hey, don't be caught unaware. Not at all. Make sure that you have prepared for the day you will meet with Allah by engaging in lots of sujood, fulfill your salah, asking Allah's forgiveness constantly. Be a beautiful person. A person who's beautiful will have a beautiful link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why if we take a look at Surah Nur, and even Surah Tahrim, in Surah Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And repent to Allah, turn to Allah, repent to Allah, all of you believers, so that you will be successful. You want success in the dunya, in the akhirah? Turn to Allah, repent to Him, and be steadfast upon it. Verse number 31 of Surah Nur. And Surah Tahrim, verse number 8, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, Tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Repent to Allah genuinely, sincerely. Be genuine when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he continues to say, Allah will forgive you and grant you paradise. May he grant us paradise. I want to end with a few narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which are full of mercy. And the reason why I'm going to mention these beautiful narrations is because I would like to leave this hall with hope and with resolutions that I will become a better person. And I want the same, if not better for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيءُ النَّهَارِ وَيَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ بِالنَّهَارِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِيءُ اللَّيْلِ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches his hand every evening to forgive those who have committed sin by day. And he stretches his hand every day to forgive those who have committed sin by night until the sun will rise from the west, which means right up to the end of time. Every night Allah is asking you and me to seek forgiveness. He's waiting. Another narration. يَنزِلُ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ حِينَ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْأَخِيرِ فَيَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ تَائِبٍ فَأَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرَ لَهِ وَهَلْ مِنْ سَائِلٍ فَأُعْطِيَهِ Every night, when a third of the night remains, and that's the time of tahajjud that we know it as, just before the time of fajr sets in, Allah descends to the lowest heavens calling out, is there anyone who is seeking forgiveness that I can forgive them? Anyone repenting that I can accept it? Anyone asking me anything they want so that I can give them? How many times are we up? If it's World Cup, we are up. Football, cricket, whatever else there is. I don't know what people are into here. We're up watching. And just as Adhan of Fajr goes, you say, oh, bedtime. And then we go to sleep. What happened to your Fajr? No wonder your team lost. <laughs> if you've seen Twitter, sometimes the brothers and sisters might have noticed there are people who actually tweet me, asking me, Sheikh, please, please make a dua that Liverpool wins. <laughs> My brother, Liverpool winning. Subhanallah. If you had to have a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wouldn't mind. Listen to my little fatwa. Do you know what it is? Obviously, this is on a lighter note. I support the winning team. That's why we always win. MashaAllah. So even halfway through the match, then these guys start winning. That's my team, man. Then those guys win. That's my team, man. Because football and that is not going to get you into Jannah. Really. But if you have overcome shaitan, then you've won. And you've won big time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He open our doors. 
Look at the mercy of Allah. He's asking you, what do you want? And guess what? He's kept the need in you. So he knows you need. So he knows you have to ask. Hence, he's telling you, I know you have to ask. Are you ready to even ask? Some of us are too lazy. We don't even want to get up at that time. We have a big problem. But subhanallah, when the problem becomes very big, then we start getting up. It's true. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. Imagine at the end of the path, we will all be in Jannah. Subhanallah. It's like I can see it. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. May Allah forgive us and grant us Jannah. My brothers and sisters, you know what's in Jannah? Oh, beautiful man. It's too sweet. Alhamdulillah. The Quran says something amazing. فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِيهِ الْأَنفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنُ وَأَنْتُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ In it is whatever your soul desires, whatever you wish is yours. Now, you know when you enter, for example, a place and you're given a whole lot of money and you're spending, you start getting worried that, hey, my money might finish, even if you had millions. You know, when you start blowing this way and that way and doing whatever you want and becoming a big, like, you know, man who's just dishing out as though he's got everything in the world to give. There comes a time when you think, how long will this last? No matter how wealthy you are, you think to yourself, how long will this last? You know what Allah says? Allah says, you will get whatever you desire and whatever is tasty to your eyes. Normally we taste with the tongue. Allah says, whatever is delicious to the eye, You'll have it. And you will be in Jannah forever and ever, eternity. So it's not going to stop. It only gets better. Subhanallah. It only gets better. And there are these rivers of honey, pure honey, and rivers of pure milk. Subhanallah. The milk that doesn't go bad. And there's pure, subhanallah, rivers of water and rivers of fruit juice of whatever I want. And it's all there. And I own it. And it's mine. And this, everything I see belongs to me. Allah says, Jannah has in it something that is far greater and bigger than each person's singular paradise, singular garden. You know, Jannah means a garden. Your own garden will be bigger than 10 times the size of the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala currently. Meaning the earth and the heavens and whatever is between it. 10 times more than that. That's if you're the worst person and the last one to enter Jannah. Imagine if you're not. I'm, I, I'm either the last one or I'm either better than the last one. So Allah's talking about the worst one. Worst one, well, this is what you get. Everything on earth and in the heavens and whatever is between. And you know what? Multiply it by 10 times. And that's mine. Obviously here we're talking of the dunya that we know. Okay. Multiplied by 10. The dunya we know multiplied by 10. It's for the worst person, the last one to enter Jannah. Wow. I'm waiting for that day, inshallah. I'm waiting for that day. And the hadith says, Fiha ma la aynun ra'at, wala udunun sami'at, wala khatar ala qalbi bashar. When I read this, I have to sit and think, and I think, and I smile to myself. Sometimes it makes me blush too, mashallah. Do you know what it says? In Jannah is something your eyes have never seen. So I sit and I think to myself, that means if I've seen something with my eyes, it does not qualify to go into Jannah. That's it. It does not qualify to go into Jannah as it is. Oh, women must be happy. Oh, that's nice because I seen my husband. <laughs> Do you know what that means? He just said, whatever you've seen is not going to be there. Whatever you've seen is definitely not going to be there the way you've seen it. It will be in a perfect form that will be mind boggling. And you'll be like, ooh, wow, my husband, ooh, subhanallah. <laughs> MashaAllah, this is why we say wait and get there, get there. And you'll see what Allah's kept for you is something mind boggling. Really, our brains are not qualified to imagine what's in Jannah to the level of it in Jannah. But we are asked to look into it in order to try and Go towards it and work towards it. La aynun ra'at. No eye has ever seen. Wala udunun sami'at. That would mean two things. No ear has ever heard. That can mean 
It could mean the sound as well, as well as any description that you might have heard. Say we're sitting and we're talking of something. And you've heard me saying it and I've heard you say it. Guess what? It won't be in Jannah. Because in Jannah is going to be something better than that. Far better in terms of quality. So you might have oranges perhaps in Jannah. But they won't be oranges that you've seen here or heard of here. It's something totally different, mind-boggling. Get there and see and then you will say, yes, indeed, Allah has fulfilled his promise. So neither the eyes have ever seen. What have you seen? I, I've seen some really lovely things on earth. I've seen some really, really lovely things on earth. And we've seen so much. Guess what? You, nothing on earth is qualified to go into Jannah because it's created for the earth. The body you have here and now is very, very earthly. Does not qualify to get into Jannah. As this body, you will be given a perfect body by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So perfect that it's unimaginable. Unimaginable. You don't need to sweat on the treadmill just to lose two kilos. Not at all. Nothing. You need to think about it and there's your shape. Wow. You need to think about it and it starts changing. You know, they say apple shape and pear shape and whatever else. Subhanallah. All that will be forgotten because that would need something else completely. Just imagine. And then you have the hadith ending by saying, Wala khatara ala qalbi bashar. It has not even crossed the heart of a human. And you can even say the mind of a human. It didn't even cross your mind. It didn't even cross your heart. When you see it, you're going to say, I never ever seen something like this. I've never heard of something like this. I've never ever dreamt of something like this. And I never thought that this is what they would be. Now, come on. Wouldn't we like to go there? Subhanallah. Wouldn't you like to be with your husbands, inshallah? Wouldn't you like to be with your wives, alhamdulillah? Yes, we would. Because when you see your, your spouse, you're going to say, <gasps> I never ever imagined in the wildest of my dreams that this is what you're going to look like. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, subhanallah. How exciting. I told you it makes us blush sometimes. Wow, I'm excited. I can't wait, subhanallah. I really can't wait to get there by the will of Allah. But guess what? In order to get there, those resolutions we made today, fulfill them and make sure that you don't miss them. Because what's the point of knowing what's in Jannah and being so excited? Allah promised you. And this is why we always say the promise of Allah is such that he's literally telling us, don't worry about what's going to be there, not going to be there in terms of items, because your mind will never be able to. All you got to know is we will definitely please you to the extent of the term pleasure. You will be the happiest. You will be the most content and satisfied. Whatever you wish is absolutely yours. But the journey to that paradise begins here and now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the ability to turn to him and to become serious about our link with Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.